In this video, we are going to review some graphs and equations relevant to the study of pharmacokinetics. There are some things in this lecture that you will be expected to reproduce in exams. For instance, you might be asked to draw inhalational wash-in curves and wash-out curves in short answer questions. And you may be asked to draw or describe first order and zero order elimination kinetics during a viva. Uh, however, I hope that these concepts will be useful um, during the later lectures as well when we try to apply some of these things. So we're going to discuss exponential functions and exponential decay, logarithmic functions and log transformation, and the differences between first order and zero order kinetics. There are two exponential functions important in pharmacokinetics, and they are the wash-in curve and the wash-out curve. Um, the graphs look like that, and those are the equations relevant to them. There is, in fact, a third curve that we see in biology, the tearaway curve or the exponential growth curve, uh, but that's less relevant to our discussions. Let's start with exponential functions. An exponential function is one where the output, y, is equal to a constant, a, raised to the power of the input, x. A natural exponential function is one where the output, y, is equal to Euler's number, e, raised to the power of the input. The nature of this equation is such that the rate of change is identical to the output at all values of x. To put this another way, the slope of the tangent at any point on the curve is the same as the y value at that tangent. Now, importantly, if we say substrate instead of y and time instead of x, then we can construct a curve that models time-dependent processes. That is, the rate of change in the amount of substrate is proportional to the amount of substrate present at that time. As a result, these curves and equations are ubiquitous in biology. The natural exponential function is modified in order to model exponential decay. e to the x becomes e to the minus x, which flips the curve upside down. The x is multiplied by a coefficient little a, which determines how spread out the function is along the x-axis. The entire function is multiplied by a coefficient big A, which determines how spread out the function is along the y-axis. We'll now discuss logarithmic functions. The equation y equals log base a of x means to what power must a be raised in order to arrive at the value x. Using base 10 logarithms as an example, we know that 10 raised to the power of 2 equals 100. Therefore, log base 10 of 100 equals 2. There are several uses of base 10 logarithmic functions in biology, and the acid-base chemistry is one of these. My understanding is that logarithmic functions are used in order to represent proportional change in a system in a way that is easier on the eyes and easier on the calculator. For example, in acid-base chemistry, a decrease in the pH of 1 means a thousand-fold increase in the hydrogen ion concentration. This is useful because the numbers vary to such a large degree. The problem, of course, is that these functions can obscure the true nature of things. A patient with a pH of 6.8 is in far deeper doo-doos than the change in the number from 7.4 might suggest. There are, of course, natural logarithmic functions as well, uh, where the base is e rather than 10. Dose response curves are often log transformed on the x axis to produce the classic sigmoid shape. This allows for more convenient representation of concepts such as EC50 and ED50, as well as dose ratio and variation in potency between drugs. For the purpose of representing drug metabolism, concentration versus time curves are usually log transformed along the y axis. Note that this turns a natural exponential decay function into a straight line. This can be handy, for example, if we were to administer a known amount of drug into a patient and collect plasma concentration data at various time points 
we will be able to easily extrapolate that curve back to time zero and calculate things like volume of distribution. In addition, we can deconstruct multi-exponential decay curves into their constituent elements and draw them all together. Here we can see a tri-exponential decay curve, the dotted line, along with components A, B, and C. Note that the y-axis of this graph has been log-transformed. Next we will discuss the nature and differences between first-order and zero-order kinetics. What first-order means is that when we plot rate of change versus drug concentration, we see a line with a first-order exponent, that is, t raised to the 1. Note that once the substrate concentration becomes high enough, the elimination system does become saturated and we will see zero-order kinetics. Examples of this are propofol and remifentanil, which was, as we all know, are rapidly eliminated drugs. The concentration versus time curve associated with first-order elimination kinetics is in fact the natural exponential decay curve with which we are all now familiar. Zero-order kinetics, on the other hand, means that when we plot rate of change versus drug concentration, we see an equation with a zero-order exponent, that is, t raised to the zero. Of course, t raised to the zero is one, and therefore the rate of change is a constant. Note that if the substrate concentration gets low enough, such that the elimination system is no longer saturated, we then see first-order elimination kinetics. This is the converse of what happens with first-order systems. The elimination curve for this drug, that is, concentration versus time during offset, is a straight line. Here's another way of putting it. Let's say you're a jockey. If you whip your horse, it goes faster. If you whip your horse more, it goes faster again. If you whip your horse even more than that, then it will go faster again. However, at some point, the horse is going as fast as it can, and whipping it more will make absolutely no difference. The thing you need to understand is that this is the case for all horses. It's just that some horses max out earlier than others. In fact, every drug in theory can be subject to either first order or zero order elimination systems. However, each will be subject to more of one than the other during the concentrations that are seen in clinical practice. In summary, wash-in curves describe inhalational induction. The washout curve describes intravenous and inhalational offset. First order elimination systems are rapidly eliminating systems. The zero order elimination systems are slow.